Hello. Besito, Soto. Can everybody hear me? Yay. Okay. Well, good afternoon. And as always, um, please put into the chat where you are at the moment, what country, where you are in the house. Today will be in English because my Spanish is horrible. <laughs> so, not to worry, Nevis. <laughs> <laughs> and I am uh, I am in <laughs> North Carolina. <laughs> so hello everybody. We're going to um, start out in the Wiz IQ, and I will give a presentation about uh, setting up the uh, learning center. The topic <laughs> that we got, um, and then towards the end of it. Um, if no one is able to uh, screen share, <laughs> he has to say that <laughs> because I'm a student for a long time. Um, uh, okay, I lost my track. Okay, um, we're starting in the Wiz IQ. Towards the end, we will uh, go to Second Life to take a brief tour of the Learning Center. It's not as... Um, uh, Finish as I had hoped it would be because I had a lot of things to do, but the first floor is finished, so you'll get to see all three of the floors and get a little bit of a tour about what's coming in the Learning Center. Um, uh, and if no one else can screen share, because I cannot screen share, I have three floors and we have a roof garden too that hasn't been put together and a meditation for it. This is in my Learning Center. Um, which is next door to the Second Life MOOC um, headquarters. Uh, if no one else can screen share, what we will do is close the WizIQ class um, and save the chat and say see you later and give you the uh, SRL before we do that, the location in um, Second Life. And then we will appear, <laughs> those of us who are already with an avatar in Second Life, and I will be recording that tour as well. So when the class gets uploaded to uh, the class website, you'll see both the WizIQ and then appended to the end, added to the end, you will see the, um, the tour from my perspective because I'm videoing myself. So welcome to yet another uh, session of, of uh, the Second Life MOOC. Later at 4 p.m. we'll also have a similar kind of thing for making display boards although we'll spend more time in Second Life than in the IQ. This is our wonderful um, presenters board, which has changed somewhat uh, because we've had the addition of a couple of people and a person has had to um, cancel. So this is going to change a little bit when Nellie's back from, from her trip. Um, but we've been very, very lucky in that we've had an enormous number of very interesting people doing incredible projects in um, uh, <clears throat> incredible projects in Second Life uh, gives uh, talks about their activities. So I think we've been very lucky with that. And I know that uh, Doris and some of you attended the Virtual World's Best Practices in Education um, conference that was taking place from the 9th through the 12th in Second Life. There are some really good uh, videos on YouTube if you were unable to go to that conference in World. Um, there are some wonderful videos on YouTube. You just have to put in VWBPE 2014 into the search bar, and you will get um, videos of all the keynote speakers, including Philip Rosell, who was the founder of London Laboratories. So I hope you'll take advantage of that as well, because not, not only are some of the speakers in our uh, class um, represented in that fantastic conference, um, if you were able to go to the conference, hey, Maria Sol. Um, but uh, there were also some keynote speakers who were really wonderful and um, pretty amazing. Ah, Dad. <laughs> That's a good way to call him, Russ. I like that. Okay, so let's get started. On today's talk. And um, I am using my other affiliation. I have three affiliations. I have a research center here where I teach at uh, North Central University where I teach psychology. And then my husband and I have a small 
um, consulting company. Hi, Tom. Glad to see you. Glad to see everybody. <clears throat> and I'm using um, uh, my other affiliation on this talk because I my learning center is on an unusual topic. And you'll see as we start talking about um, what the content of my learning center is. And the university that I teach psychology for would rather I didn't mention them in connection to that content. So I understand that completely. And I'm using um, my, my husband and my uh, business. Um, also, because the Learning Center is named after us, <laughs> we call it the ASIRE, which stands for the Alvarado Zingroni Institute for Research and Education, which sounds very exciting, um, but only exists in Second Life. So um, not that we aren't doing some really fun things there. I think we are. So this is a little bit about um, my uh, journey in uh, figuring out what to do in Second Life once I, once I was pushed there. Um, and it, it, the idea of putting together a learning center came from two motivations. The first and most important was my husband and I have been doing research in our field for about 30 years and education on and off. Um, and we're very interested in making sure that good information is out there about uh, the research that's done and the findings and experiences and so on that are in our corner of the, the psychological world. Um, and it, we have never had an opportunity in our lives to have our own um, place. We've worked for foundations. We work for a foundation. We work for the University of Virginia. We worked at Atlantic University also, um, which is part of an association called the Association for Research and Enlightenment. Um, we have both started out with uh, groups in um, uh, our where we're from. My husband's from San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'm from Ch the Chicago area. We both started out with local groups that were um, doing uh, some research and some education and um, kind of activities and so on um, in our own areas as well. But to put together an actual learning center is an, is an expensive proposition. You need the land, you need the building, you need the staff, you need the materials, you need the furniture, you need so much. Um, and that type of, of, of financial investment was has always been beyond our personal means, although we've worked for people um, uh, such as the foundation we work for in New York City, um, that uh, had that kind of capital at the time and had a wonderful building and so on and so on. So we had this motivation of to, to do good education and to um, bring our own kind of point of view to the way that we were teaching. We were particularly interested in helping um, academics and students and scientists and teachers who are interested in the same topic to get their hands on the good material. So that was a big motivation. Um, and when I first came in life, I um, had the benefit of a great deal of other people's experiences and expertise, similar to what we're hoping we're providing for you in this course. Um, and as I wandered around, I started to see uh, people doing things that I thought, wow, I could do that for my area. I could do that for my field. And I'm going to tell you what the field is. Let me type it. Um, it's basically scientific parapsychology, which is also known at, more recently as anomalistic um, psychology. And basically, we're looking at what we like to call seemingly psychic experiences. So they can be things like the out-of-body experience or the near-death experience. Hello, Heather. Nice to see you. Um, or um, apparitions, or it's a wide variety of things that are usually not discussed in a normal, conventional academic environment. And we've always had an interest in this area and have done research on it for a long time. Our research tends to be survey research, um, looking at the psychological characteristics of individuals who report these experiences. And mainly we do that because we have known in our lives people who have these types of experiences who are perfectly well-adjusted, 
happy, healthy people. And typically, psychologists in the United States, at least, and psychiatrists will say, oh, you think you saw an apparition? Well, something is wrong with you. So we don't feel that connection of um, having some kind of a mental problem and having what seems to be a psychic experience. We don't think that's a valid connection for most people. So that's kind of what our motivation is. And that's my husband in the background. He's making his lunch. Um, so I was thinking all the time that I was wandering around about how I could get the scientific information out to people who were interested because um, it's very diff. <laughs> Doris is waving at you, Carlos. Um, uh, it's very uh, difficult to do to get that kind of information out. People in the public, this is <laughs> there he is right there, waving back to Doris. Um, in the general public and people in media and so on, they kind of go for. Um, a very sensationalized, very dramatic, um, not so true version of how these experiences happen. So um, our idea was to do something new. And then to be perfectly honest, I was worried about um, being seen as having a second life addiction um, because I was spending quite a bit of time doing professional development in Second Life um, with the International Society for Technology and Education and the Virginia Society for Technology and Education and you know various other groups in Second Life. And so I felt like I had to have a real purpose in Second Life. I couldn't just come and play. I could play, but I also wanted to be doing some work. No, I know, Maria Sol, it, it was a silly motivation. But at the beginning, it was, that was kind of what was in my head. Now, I've been in world. Um, my res, my res, uh, my birth date, my res date um, was June 6, 2009. So I've been in world now five years, um, for uh, yeah, for quite a while anyway. But that first few months, it was like mm, I have to have work to do in order to be able to justify my time in Second Life. So. What I did was set up a, let me get my tools here so I can point at the guy. This, this is actually the fourth iteration of the um, institute that we put together. And, um, uh, and also it's, uh, I think, fourth location as well. So I've been in a variety of locations in Second Life. Yes. <laughs> and um, I, I have come to believe that imitation is the best form of praise. I saw so many really wonderful museums and um, libraries and uh, exhibitions in Second Life, uh, not the least of which were at um, um, the Instituto Español that, that uh, Russ runs, but galleries, you know, there were so many examples of uh, really wonderful ways of getting information across out there that I tried to learn from each of those things. So the three main um, principles of, of the kind of advice that I give now to other people who would like to, um, uh, I'm laughing my ESO because I was, a, I was a devil in that play. <laughs> and then you can see the video on YouTube. On your Eugenia Calderon's um, uh, site website, so there's kind of three organizing principles that I I talk about when I talk to people who ask me, um, I want or say I want to do this too. I want to have a learning center, a library, or a museum. What do you recommend? So there's three big areas. The first is watch and learn. You need to get into um, what other people are doing. And that's the first section of, of things that we'll speak about in this lecture. And then talk and plan. And basically, that means uh, bending, as they say in English, bending the virtual ear of anyone who will stand still long enough um, to uh, answer your questions about their own experiences. 
Um, so talk and plan is the next big category. And then the third is build it and they will come. And it's, it's interesting that there are not an enormous number of um, building skills that you actually need. You don't need to be a master builder to put together a museum or a library or a learning center in Second Life. You need to be able to do some basic things. But so many other uh, things that you need, such as the building, um, can be rented from uh, people, other people, or shared, or are available for free. And I'll give you some of those resources as we go along. So in the category of watch and learn, what I mean by that is you need to discover what other people are doing and what they've done. A good example for any of you in the course is what's been happening in the Second Life MOOC headquarters. We had an empty building that has been Nellie's building for a number of years. I've been saving it for Nellie. And um, up until the course started, there was only a couple of display boards at the back of the first floor. Um, the ones that you see that show the front of the, uh, um, that show IT for All for integratingtechnology.com website. And if you go to kind of around the stairs, I moved it over so we would have more um, room for other things. There's a board that shows um, this website, www.integrating-technology.org. And then there's a board that shows Nellie's pri uh, premium teachers page on wizIQ.com. Those were there for quite some time, and nothing else was in the building. Well, in the service of this course, um, uh, uh, Doris, Peonia Destiny, and Nellie, Nellie Homewood, and me, we have built a number of things in that building and put in a number of things. Doris made all the posters of the presentations. I made some of the signage. I put up the photo gallery on the second floor. Doris brought in the furniture. So we've decorated the building, we've given it um, a purpose, and uh, quite a lot of material is there for the students, and we're not finished yet. We'll be putting in more and more and more. So that's a very good example of what people can do to get information out or to provide a resource area for whatever they're doing, whether they're teaching or whatever. You'll see, you'll see, and you've seen that in the other lectures that you've attended or watched on um, WizIQ or on YouTube, that, thank you, Neva, that um, uh, so many people have done so many creative things to put, to put things together. So one of my recommendations is always go to YouTube and search libraries in Second Life. Now, one uh, tip in YouTube is for Second Life, always, always click on the filters button. And that's filters. It's a little button to the left at the top of the search page and change it to upload date because Second Life has changed so much um, over its history that it's really important to see the more recent videos. Um, some things, you know, people talking about their builds and their experience and so on, it's okay if that's five years old. But things that have to do with a particular building skill or um, uh, an area that you would like to go visit, it's much better to take a look at those um, in the more recent variety. And I've given two on this. PowerPoint, which will um, be uploaded in the um, excuse me in the in the WizIQ tutorial segment, there are there are two here that I found that were really quite nice. One was evaluating library spaces through simulation, which is actually the description of a project that's being done by a group of libraries. They're recreating libraries that exist in real life that have different designs in Second Life to kind of evaluate how well each of these designs do in terms of giving people the ability to get to the information. The second one is a virtual tour of the University of, of Detroit Mercy College and its special collections. And this is actually a very beautiful um, uh, uh, art gallery as well. So this is another, um, 
Oh, I'm no, I'm wrong. I'm thinking of one that I didn't use. This one is uh, focusing on, I think it's their um, Marine Biology Center. At least I see exhibit right now. Okay. Um, so these are two things that you can look at. But anybody that has put up a tour of their installation will give you some ideas about what you need to do. Ah, from Rio. Hello. OK. And then another way to find things to go and experience is to use the Second Life Destination Guide and search. So if you're new to Second, Second Life, you can get the destination guide. It will first it will come on as you log into the classroom. That's the first thing that it will do. And then you can also click on World. If you have the Second Life viewer, it's going to be on the bar at the top up here. If you have a different viewer, it may be along the side on one of the menus. But in, in Second Life's new viewer, it's up here at the top. And under Landmark, this place is Destinations. And when you click on Destinations, it brings up um, the bar down here and the bar is organ sort of pre-organized so it's people connected to Second Life who are making recommendations of places that you can go and see. Um, normally the international destinations, the editor's picks and what's hot now will give you some links to places that have um, educational content. But in actuality, virtually everywhere you go has to have some kind of information um, display that it gives to their customers or their role play uh, members or whatever. So you can see how people are making displays and how they're putting things up. Another way is to use the search button. Now, in, in Second Life Viewer, the new one, this little guy here is the search symbol. And when you click on that, you want to change this category right here from everything to places. And then you put something in here that you think will bring up the kind of location that you would like to look at. So for instance, I put in the university library, and I got 17 results. And in the search, you will always have this little blue um, uh, information, and then there'll be some more information. So it'll be like the name of the place, uh, description sentence and then it will allow you to teleport the little blue thing here that you can barely read says teleport and you can go to that location and explore it so that's another way to um, get some information about how people are doing the kinds of things that you might want to do for your area the third most important way is to become involved with in-world tours, talks, and conferences. And I've put um, several URLs here, uh, slurls, and I, what I'm going to do later on is I'm going to put this into um, a box in the Second Life MOVE headquarters, and you can click on it and get all these landmarks. Um, and it'll just have the name of, of uh, um, it'll just say tours or something. <laughs> Um, libraries and museum tours or things to do. You'll, you'll see it anyway. It'll be there and you can click on it. So one of the, the most important things I think is to get involved with ISTE SIGBI. Now this is the International Society for uh, Technology in Education and that's the special interest group for virtual environments. Environment. That's what ISTE SIGBI stands for. They have a, a, a location. Um, they have a variety of events that happen, um, uh, not the least of which is the tour that happens every, uh, I think it's Thursday night we go on a tour. Um, but they do events on Tuesdays, sometimes have a speaker, and then on Thursdays as well. And then there's other um, kinds of things that go on that are special events around courses or projects that people are doing and occasionally there's a party. Um, so that's a group that you would like to, would be good for you to join in Second Life if you haven't got too many groups. You can have up to 42 groups now. Another one is the Virginia um, Society. Let's see, it's this Virginia Society 
for technology and education. This is a free society to join in the real world. Um, ISTE is, has a fee if you want to join it in the real world, but you don't have to pay a fee to join it in Second Life. VISTI, on the other hand, is not just for people in the state of Virginia in the United States. It's also available to people who are um, all over the world, and it's free to join. They have a lot of webinars, and they also have a lot of activities in Second Life. And especially, um, my video has frozen. I don't know if you can still see me. There we go. Um, can you hear me, though? Oh, good. OK. Well, <laughs> sorry, I've frozen. Um, maybe, uh, well, that's OK. OK, so long as you can hear me. Um, in Second Life, you want to try and join VISTI as well, because VISTI has a lot of activities. And they have um, especially a build activity that I'll talk about a little bit later when we get to that portion. So they do a lot of, of uh, socials and activities and all kinds of wonderful things. Um, so they're important. Now, this, this particular illustration, can you, can you see my, um, is my pointer working? It's the il illustration to the left here. This is actually the landmark board at the ISTE SIGBE headquarters. And all of these are landmarks. The majority of them are, are um, up to date. So if you click on these, they will tell you, take you to places that um, you can find. Um, down here, you see this little gold one here. It says Expedition Central in that first picture to the left. Down at the bottom, this landmark here is for ex Exhibition Central. Now, this is the person, uh, Cyrus Hush, who we hope will be doing a talk for us before the course is over. He runs these tours for ISTE every Thursday evening. And he has an enormous number of landmarks to really neat places around Second Life. This link actually goes to his Education Expedition Central um, Clubhouse. So this is another group you, would, you might get some benefit out of, Expedition Central. You can also go and take, um, exactly, Doris, exactly. You can also go and take um, his tours with ISTE. They're you know, just free. Um, and the benefit of when you join ISTE, you'll get the notifications as well. You don't need to be an educator to join some of the some of these. ISTE doesn't care. Um, ISTE is full of students and librarians and just interested people and educators um, as well. And VISTE is very open as well. So you don't have to be teaching somewhere um, to be a member of these organizations. In Virtual Pioneers uh, is the second photograph here over to the right-hand side. And they run tours on Sunday nights. They're mainly interested in history. So they go to a lot of historical sites. They visited um, recently the Rose Theater, which is spectacular. And they've um, gone to all kinds of historical builds. We, a couple weeks ago, we were in um, a Chinese city. And uh, a couple weeks before that, I think, in Berlin, which is set to the 1920s. This is also a great group to join. And if you go to their headquarters in Second Life, they have a lot of links as well to great places to go. So by going to tours and going to talks and, of course, going to conferences like the Virtual World Best Practices in Education, you can see what people are doing with Second Life and how they're using the resources. And then you can think about how you can use some of their ideas to bring um, your own area of expertise or your own passion and and share it with the Second Life audience. So let me move to the second one. Sorry. <laughs> OK. Now, the next big group is you want to talk and plan. So before you set up the library, you want to start talking to people who are doing things. And this is. These are snapshots from various ISTE events. This was, a, this was basically a meet and greet where we all were just sitting on ISTE Island and talking about education in general. And this was a sock hop that we had. A, um, that a sock hop is an American term for a dance, sort of um, like from the 1950s when you're listening to uh, 1950s rock and roll. Um, and then this was a, a, a Christmas time 
uh, tour that we all went on. <clears throat> so even in all of these um, activities, when you're whether you're sitting still with 10 other people and you're talking about everybody's interests and their plans and their programs and so on, um, or you're dancing, your avatar's out there dancing the night away, you're still able to chat with each other or to communicate with each other in voice. And I have found, and I think probably Doris and many of us have found that as well, the Second Life community of educators especially are very sharing individuals. So you can ask any kind of question. Um, yeah, <laughs> actually it's it's Bobby. Yeah, Bobby Socks. Um, um, exactly right. The the notion would be that you took off your uh, your uh, saddle shoes <laughs> and put them by the side of the dance floor, and you went out to the dance floor in your in your stockings. Um, so that's that's the uh, the origin of the term. So it's a sock hop. <laughs> Sounds kind of strange, but anyway. Um, so you and I have found that you can ask absolutely any question that you need to ask, and people will help you, and they'll give you landmarks, they'll give you ideas, they'll tell you what to go and see, and so on. So you just ask anybody and everybody about visiting, using, and constructing a library or a learning center, whatever it is that you want to accomplish in Second Life, and people will give you advice. And I got some great advice. So the, the advantages were the kind of the consensus, the general advice that I got over and over again was having a virtual library or a learning center in Second Life is great because it's very easy to make interactive displays. And we <laughs> took a tour in this course. Um, the the uh, video is not up there yet, but we took a tour in this course of a physics field that Vicki Robinson, um, who's a uh, Professor Robinson here in, Se in Second Life put together is that's an extremely high end and very sophisticated and complex bill because she uh, set up uh, physics tasks for her students to accomplish in world. But if you're just giving people information, um, the kinds of skills that you need are not so uh, um, they're not so hard to learn. Um, the materials in a Second Life. Um, in a Second Life library can lead to something else. So in real life, you'll pick up a book and you open it up and read what's in there. In Second Life, you can set up something. Thanks, Maria and, and Nevis. Um, you can set up something that your avatar can click on, and it takes you to a website, or it gives you a note card full of information, or it gives you an object that you can use later. So that's really wonderful. The person can walk through your installation and interact with everything that they see. And that's very important. It makes, makes for a sticky site. And when I say sticky, what that means is it keeps people interested and it keeps people in that space. When I first put up the Learning Center, I was keeping very close tabs on how uh, many people came to the site and when they when they would trigger the kind of the doorbell, you know, I had a little um, gadget that would send me information, and there were people that would be back and back one day after the next, and in the library for quite a while, and it was it was pretty obvious that, especially after I talked to a few of them, that what they were doing was sitting their avatar avatar down and reading some of the things that we had in there. Now, right now, the third floor library is not built out yet. But it was built when it was built out before. There were display boards you could click that would take you to a freely available article or book on the internet, and the people would put their avatars in a chair and read um, in the library, and that was really wonderful. The other thing is the low cost of real estate. Um, in the real world, you have to have an enormous amount of money to set up even a very small building full of information, and then you've got to staff somebody to be there. In Second Life, I think my first uh, location, which you'll see in a minute, um, cost me, I think it was 50 lindens a week uh, to have. But that's a very small amount of money, and it was something that I could certainly afford. And then because I could set up displays that people could interact with when I wasn't around, I didn't need to be there all the time. So that's really wonderful. Um, 
And then there are tools and gadgets and script building wizards and websites available. And I will show you these, especially in the building, um, uh, in, in the building, um, excuse me, in the, in the building workshop that comes at four o'clock. So these tools and gadgets that are free can help you give note cards and website addresses, um, landmarks and objects, and you can just go to a website and say what you want to do, and it builds a script for you, and you can cut and paste it into whatever it is that you're building. It lets you um, set up an interactive PowerPoint that the person, the avatar, can click on and make it move forward, or you can set up a PowerPoint that's always looping. It's always going from the first slide to the last slide and starting over again. So your information is always available. You can get free gadgets, and you'll see that uh, in the library, uh, that will count how many visits you've had to your, your, your location. And that's a great way to see whether or not um, you've got the kind of traffic that you want and how many people have seen the places all the time. And then there are gadgets that are free that are those wonderful little join boxes. You know, the, the um, let me write this down. And you can click on them and you can join a group and then you can get information from that. We're all having technical problems today. <laughs> this is terrible. So the then the third, the, the next portion of it is to gain the skills. So you need to learn to build a little bit. And that's part of what we're going to do this afternoon at <coughs> 4. Um, you need to kind of get these small amounts of, of, of expertise that you need to make the basic displays that you want to make. And essentially, I tell people, I'm not really a builder. I'm a prim stretcher. And the, the basic um, uh, thing of, of um, the basic element of building is called a prim. And prim is short for primitive. And it comes in a variety of shapes. And everything is built out of the prim. OK, so we're going to just told me to shut my video off, so I did that. Um, and so I always tell people I'm a prim stretcher. I can make a prim big or small or whatever. And I'm a texture slapper. So I'm a prim stretcher and a texture slapper. So I know how to put a texture on a prim and make it look like something. And I know how to stretch it. So for instance, in this little illustration of the Visti sandbox, this is a prim, that's a prim, that's a prim. And what they've done, and that all of this, these are prims, they have taken one of these basic shapes and stretched it into the shape that they want, and they've put a texture on it that gives you either the information or makes it look like grass or trees or stone or whatever. So those are kind of the basic things that you need to be able to do. And again, one of the first places you need to go is to you to build videos. Search for um, Second Life Building Tutorials. And again, use the filter and make sure you're getting videos that are recent. Um, because uh, the viewers have changed and what you can do with the primitives has changed over time. So you don't want to watch a building um, guy from five years ago, unless you're in an open sim world. Um, but, but for Second Life, you want to try and find more recent ones. And then you, go, you can also take advantage of the VISTI's Monday night make and take tutorials. These are done um, frequently, not every single Monday, but frequently by Mandy Mimilis, who's Marie Booz in, in uh, real life. She's a um, head of instructional technology for the Virginia Beach school system. And she is fantastic about putting together a kit out of which you can build something like a Halloween display or a lamp post with a lamp that turns on. And by going to her make and take tutorials, and there are other ones around Second Life as well, you can um, learn some of these basic skills that you can then use in your own learning um, institution. And then as, as Maria Sol was saying, this is a huge resource, Builders Brewery. Builders Brewery is, is a no worries, Sermon. There'll be a, um, a recording of this. There are some fantastic courses there. There are all kinds of tools that you can use, um, textures and so on, that you can, you can uh, take for your own. 
um, Gentle Heron, yeah, teaches there. So there's a lot of different courses that you can take and learn those basic skills. And really all you need to set up a library like my library is, is the basic stuff. So let me go on because I don't want to use the whole hour. So then you develop a location. And essentially that's finding a place where that you can afford that's big enough for you to do something with. Over here is our very first learning center. Um, the one that we rented for 50 uh, lindens a week in the Chilbo community, right there a couple doors up from the Second Life Booth headquarters. Um, we had that space, and this was our open house um, when, we, when we first opened it back in September of 2009. So if you go to the new learning center, which is in the other direction um, from the Second Life Booth, it's the very next big building um, uh, from the Second Life Booth headquarters. Um, you'll see a sign above the desk that says 45, about 4,500, and that's how many visitors have been to one of our learning centers since, our main learning center, since September of 2009. So I just have carried that, that. And you'll notice here in the first installation it says 13. So over the last five years we've had about 1,000 people a year come through um, the learning center, which is really amazing. Some of them maybe not stay so long, but some of them stay fairly long. And this was the interior of the very first one. I had a YouTube video of a, and had YouTube's playing of, of people who are very well-known researchers in our field and a not very pretty looking um, uh, group joiner. And then these were books that you could click through on Amazon, which I, I now have uh, some in the New Learning Center. You could click through to Amazon and read about the books. Um, uh, on Amazon.com, and then if you wanted to, you could buy them or, or do that look, look inside the book thing. Then at one point, we decided we needed a few more spaces, and I was given this uh, space, which was on Innovation Island, and it was a uh, library space that was available for any kind of library, and I, was, um, I got in touch with the Alliance for Virtual Libraries, um, and they uh, invited me to use it for six months for free. So I set up the library in this space. I still had this learning center, but this became a bigger space. Um, and what was going on here that has not been reinstalled yet in the learning center in, in um, the, as you will see it, it's next door to the headquarters. I, I was setting up links to articles, scholarly and academic and scientific articles in my field in various languages. So I had a bookshelf of Spanish articles, a bookshelf of Portuguese articles, one of English, and had plans for a German shelf and a, and a, um, a French shelf as well. So it was a place that people could come in and sit down and watch some PowerPoints and then click on things and be taken immediately out to the website where they could read articles in the field without having to pay any money. So they were things that were freely available. When this island closed, um, then I had to start thinking about what to do about the library. And during that period, I set up a discussion room in another very small space. So you'll see some of these in the main learning center now. And I set up a little bookstore in another room. And then finally, um, they gave me the uh, link, or they gave me this building, and I rented this building for less than I was paying for all the different buildings that I had in the neighborhood, and it was big enough that I could bring the library back from Innovation Island when it closed. So ultimately, you, you may be in a lot of different places. You get used to put, you know, putting your stuff out and picking it up and starting over again. Um, but Ultimately, if you have a group that people are joining, you can keep people aware of where you are. And now we have taken this building and added another floor on it. So it's now a three-story building. And we did that because we had a, a, um, a, a colleague who, was, who runs uh, courses in, in the building as well. So the second floor, as you'll see, is where her course stuff is. So then, this is the interior of our current um, place, and some of you have seen it, and all you have to do is walk down, walk to the east from, from the building where you are. It's one door down to the east. Um, and there's me building. And basically, you need, this is the last thing, build it and they will come. 
the basic skill set is to be able be able to manipulate prims and textures, to be able to create text template shapes and label them. So, for instance, these these little guys up here on the wall. Um, once I got a size and a shape that I liked, I saved one and called it um, a display board template. So whenever I needed to build a new one and put all these new researches in, I could bring my display board template to the ground. I could customize it for the new person with their website and whatever, and give it a new name, and then take it back into my inventory. Whenever you make something that you know you will be using over and over again, always make a template so that you can pull the template down, then you've got the size, you've got the dimensions, it's all ready for you to customize um, and give it a new name. Uh, Nelly was asking me if I was uploading te uh, textures using scripts, and in fact now in Second Life, and for many years now, what you do is you upload a texture from your computer. So I actually use PowerPoint. And I'll make a PowerPoint slide, which is what Doris did for her wonderful posters. And then when I have the PowerPoint slide the way I want it, I save it as an image, just that individual slide. And I pull it into a paint program, and I play with it. And then I upload it, and I slap it on that prim. So basically, you upload it. You have to pay 10 windows to upload. And then you slap it. Do not worry about that, Nivis. I mean, we all started somewhere. And I, I think. When I first came into the in to Second Life in 2009 in June, it took me three and a half months to really feel like I knew what I wanted to do with that first library. And then um, it was probably another year before I really felt comfortable with the idea of expanding what I was doing. Because it's a process you get to know more and more. And for instance, I could not possibly reproduce that amazing um, uh, sim that uh, uh, Professor Robinson showed us um, the other day because her level of expertise and scripting and so on is so far beyond mine. So you just do what you need to do, and then you keep learning because it's so easy to keep learning in Second Life. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then you can add scripts uh, to what you're doing. And I will be giving you all uh, the website in the display boards that will be out in the sandbox this afternoon. Each one of the display boards for building will give you all of the URLs and the landmarks that you need. Um, process you get to know more and more. And for instance, I could not possibly reproduce that amazing um, uh, sim that uh, uh, Professor Robinson showed us. Um, the other day, because her level of expertise and scripting and so on is so far beyond mine. So you just do what you need to do, and then you keep learning, because it's so easy to keep learning in Second Life. It's a lot of fun. Um, and then you can add scripts uh, to what you're doing. And I will be giving you all uh, the website in the display boards that will be out in the sandbox this afternoon, each one of the display boards for building will give you all of the URLs and the landmarks that you need. Um, yes, it, well, not yet, but um, because Nellie's not around and I can't put it up um, into the, um, uh, but she should be back soon. And I can also, I can also put it up on SlideShare and um, put that link in my freebie box that I'll put in the headquarters so that you can get get it earlier, you know, sooner rather than later, and also the presentation for 4 o'clock. Um, so uh, you, there's all these things that you can do to make scripts that's using somebody else's wizard. So this is, this is the main goal. What you want to do is have a sticky space, a space where people come and stay and really enjoy being there and get something out of what you're doing and understand what's happening. And um, the important elements are it needs to be easy to find. <laughs> so you want to call if you are renting something. You want your um, landlord to make sure they name your plot after you. Um, you want to make sure it's in um, in uh, a search. Um, sometimes you have to pay a little bit of an extra rental fee to get your land put into search. Um, if you buy a piece of land, you want to make sure you name it for what you're doing and you. Um, put it into search. You also want to have a couple of um, 
um, a couple of events so that you can put that in the event calendar and people can come and see what you're doing. You want to make sure that it's visually appealing. You want to make sure that it's easy to navigate. You want to make sure that you have comfy furniture. And that sounds funny, but people have to feel like they can plunk their avatar down in a chair and, and feel comfortable about sitting there. It's amazing how tired we can get if we stand, if our avatar stands for a really long time in Second Life, you feel like you really need to sit down. So if you have comfy looking furniture, people may come to chat with each other, or they may come to camera around and take a look at all of your materials and click and so on. And strangely enough, you need to have a little bit of food or drink, even if it's just cup of coffee like we have in, in the um, sec Second Life Move headquarters. You have to have something that, that uh, people just love to eat and drink in Second Life. I'm not sure why. I think everybody likes to see that hand come up to the, to the face with whatever it's got in it. And then it's always good to have some freebies as well so that we can come into in world. Um, and if, if you guys, if most of you guys are in the Second Life headquarters, so I will walk over there and get you. Um, Doris, if you can put the Second Life MOOC uh, thing back in there and it's going to take me a couple minutes to get in there because I need to make some changes on my computer so that I can record the tour. So if you guys can wait and roll for me for a few minutes, Tom, if you want to take the copy chat now, um, I'm going to leave the WizIQ and we'll meet in Second Life for the, for the tour and it'll be a quick tour. I'm just going to take you and show you the building and let you see it and, and let you wander around and um, click on what you can click on. We may walk up to the top of the building and then I've got to get working on the later um, um, the talk at four. So and we have one one board up. Um, so we have we'll have to do that. So thank you very much everybody for your attention and we will see you in Second Life and Tom I hope you've taken the chat because I haven't yes, you're there. I haven't copied it. And I know you're all there. Well, I'm going to walk up the street, and I'll be with you in about three or four minutes. Bye now. Bye, everybody. I'm closing this off. Bye. Thank you. Carlos, I need your... Um, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about not being able to speak. Okay, so everybody follow me. Follow me. This is it. This is the learning center. Come on into the building. My doorknob makes noise anyway. Hello, everybody. This <laughs> we will wait for everybody to get here. Sorry about having to write. Hi, Ignacio.
Hello, Luco. Nice to meet you. Wonderful. Once, once everybody gets here, I'll write a little about the center. In the meantime, you can click on everything <laughs> and see what happens. Let's see if Wiz IQ shut off my microphone. Welcome, everybody. This learning center is dedicated to the scientific study of psychic phenomena. There are three of us who work here and have contributed to the, the building. Myself, my husband, Rodolfo Mirabella, he is my husband in real life also, and, <laughs> and my colleague, Gina Pickersgill, who is a trainer and um, a therapist. She has many mindfulness and meditation sims, or at least, <laughs> and has taught courses on the second floor here. Second, whoops, second, second floor. She is Nina Lancaster. Yeah. Behind, okay, behind you on the wall, you see photos of various real life researchers in this field. They are physicists, psych well, psychologists, physicists, historians, and engineers. If you click on their photos, it will give you the link to their websites. So this is a way to learn about the researchers. Let me get this out of the way. Sorry about the stray prim. <laughs> okay. Whoa, whoops. Over on the far wall, you will see some boards. Oh, so <laughs> sorry about Christine's picture. <laughs> I will fix that later. Anyway, on the far wall, you will see some boards that provide click-throughs to online courses that are available for registration right now. On the short uh, shelf, you will see the most recent books and most important books by academics and scientists on our field. If you click on a book title, you will get the link to the listing of the book on Amazon.com. And you can read about the book, look 
inside the book. And if you are interested, buy the book. On the back wall, buy the Coke Coca-Cola machine. There is an additional shelf of books on the field. They are written by psychologists, psychiatrists, historians, engineers, philosophers, and others. And if you are thirsty, you can get a Coca Cola from the machine. If you are hungry, you can get snacks from the other machine. There are also anywhere doors that go to other floors but we will walk up any questions about this floor <laughs> Actually, many people love to eat and drink in Second Life because there are no consequences. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Nivis asked, why she needs to drink and eat in Second Life. Okay, let's go to the second floor. <laughs> Follow me. Oh. Oh, one minute. You can get a free t-shirt if you click the picture at the top near me and you can join my group if you click the picture at the bottom near me and behind me as we go up the stairs is a PowerPoint of websites of people and places who do this research so you can move the PowerPoint and see more information if you want to. Also there is a note card giver oops giver with with all the links as we walk up the stairs. So let's go upstairs. Everybody's getting a free t-shirt. Okay, come up to the second floor.
<laughs> so this space is where Nina holds her meetings on on some Sundays. She can put up another PowerPoint board between the two chairs where Nevis is sitting and her students and colleagues can sit where Peonia is and listen. We have cookies and coffee up here for them. Uh, uh, feel free to come anytime to relax here. It, it is always open. In the in <laughs> lol. we are foodies in world and out. In the fall, I am going to teach some courses here also. Actually, there should be music. Maybe it is not playing right now. Nivis, to stop your hand gestures, you can go to preferences and the chat tab and unclick uh, let's see what it is play typing animation when chatting I don't know what's wrong with my phone okay Let's go to the fourth floor, er, third floor, <laughs> sorry, it is not finished yet, but I can tell you what will be there. Follow me. Yes, yes, Montado. Thank you, Anne. Come on upstairs, everybody. Let's see. Anyone is still on the bottom floor. Yeah. <laughs> Love. <laughs> okay, well, on this floor will be the read in library 
I have display boards like the book uh, covers that have URLs that go to free articles on the internet. I have 15 in English, 15 in Spanish, 15 in Portuguese, and oh, and a list in French and another list in German that I have not made into display boards already. I also have many classic books in my field and in psychology. There are a few on the fireplace. So eventually this room will have many articles and books that people can read for free in a bunch of languages. Also there will be links to YouTube videos that are oops videos that are articles um, that are that are on my topic mostly by myself and my husband um, lectures from our classes and in July Nelly and I are going to do a MOOC on my field and then I will have lectures from many other people. So that's the plan. Now I will show you how wonderful the Anywhere doors are. Come and try the door. The door takes you to the roof. You click once on the door and it opens. Inside is a rotating display. You click on that and it says sit here. When you take the sit here option you will disappear aha, on this floor and you will be on the roof when you get to the roof click on the door that says meditation porch and go there and wait for us yay I will go last. Uh -huh. You want to right click on the door. Oop, no, Oop. left click. <laughs> and then, oops, and then click, <laughs> click again on the inside of the door. Sorry.
Sorry. Now, click on the door that says exit. It is right next to Nevis. And go through that door to the meditation porch. Not to worry. Nevis, you have to come closer to us so the door can close. There you go. Now click on the right most door that says exit to go through to the meditation porch. Hola! <laughs> Bienvenido! Ah. Bienvenido. The view is very good from up here also. So come on through to the meditation porch. Can you come through? Yay! I see the door. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, it's okay. I guess. Hi guys. Um, the door that says exit is the meditation garden. There are signs over each door. I also have to leave. I have to finish my slides for the four o'clock meeting on with IQ. So feel free to stay and explore. Bye now.